Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the Dean Show. I'm your host, Yasser Qadi. We have a question from a questioner who basically says that he's been researching the various religions, uh, that he's read quite a lot about Islam, and it's really appealing to him. And he's asking, how then should I go about accept, accepting Islam? What are the necessary steps that I have to do in order to become a Muslim? Well, we'd like to start off by saying that Alhamdulillah, indeed Allah guides those whom He wills and those whom He is pleased with. And we as Muslims believe that each and every human being who is sincere and who is curious and who wants to learn the truth, we believe that that person will eventually be guided to the truth. In other words, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because God is so loving and caring, because Allah is so just and merciful, any human being who wants to receive guidance will receive it. Any human being who wants to accept the truth will find the truth. And so this is one indication that we find from this brother that he's been reading about the religions and he's come across Islam, he's read about it, now he wants to accept it. So how does one go about accepting Islam? The response is that we are not a superstitious religion. There is no ceremonial acceptance. There is no ritualistic mumbo jumbo that people don't understand. No, the actual acceptance of Islam is an act between you and the one who created you. It's an act that is between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, of course, if you were to publicize this in a mosque, in a gathering, that's very good. But it is not a necessary condition. It is not something that is essentially required. Rather, it is just a simple sen uh, act of common sense that when you have embraced a faith, you wish to join that community, you wish to announce your, your Islam in that community. But the actual act of conversion is simply the utterance of the testimony of faith. And the testimony of faith in Arabic, as you are, I'm, uh, I'm sure, very well aware because you've researched Islam, the testimony of faith is Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah, which translates as I testify, I am fully convinced, I have no doubt, I am absolutely certain that there is no deity that is worthy of my veneration and worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I testify, I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah. This is the testimony by which you accept Islam. Now, if you want to perfect this testimony, if you want to do the best things possible, you should purify yourself, take a bath, you know, wear good clothes, go to the mosque, go to your local community of Muslims, tell them you want to embrace Islam, and, and do a public testimony of faith. But all of these are embellishments that are nice to have, but they are not requirements. You may embrace Islam in the privacy of your home. You may do it in a, 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 in a room where nobody else can hear you except for the one who created you. So this is the requirement and if you want to perfect it then as we said, uh, you should take a ritual bath to symbolize your purification, to symbolize that you have now entered a new facet, a new phase of your life where you will be a pure person obeying the commandments of Allah, obeying the commandments of God. Now after you have uh, accepted the testimony of faith, you should try to find your local mosque, your local community, so that you are aware of the events going on. Try to uh, uh, attend various gatherings. Obviously, you should attend the mosque on Fridays. You need to start praying regularly, the five times prayer. You need to fast the month of Ramadan. You need to pay the charity to the poor. All of these pillars of Islam, you are very well aware because you have researched Islam. But the point is that with that conviction, with that testimony, the entire religion of Islam becomes obligatory upon you to act upon. Therefore, make sure that you are ready and prepared to accept this religion. Make sure you are intellectually, yes, I know this is the truth and I want to go ahead and accept it. If you are still unsure, if you're still doubtful, research, ask around, pray, pray to the God who created you, don't even give him a name, say, oh you who created me, guide me to the truth. And if you are sincere, then we as Muslims believe that you will indeed be guided to the truth. Now a brief explanation of what this testimony is. The first part of the testimony is the conviction that there is no deity that is worthy of worship except for the one who created you. The one who created you is the one who is all knowledgeable, all powerful. He hears you wherever you are. No being loves you as much as the one who created you, not even your mother and father. No being cares about you. No being has the power to help you, benefit you, to prevent harm from you, other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you know these facts, how then can you turn to others in worship? 
we do not turn to any other being even the prophets of God even the angels even the saints we believe in saints we believe in holy men we call them holy people we believe in them and only God knows who they are but they are there they're, of course they're there but even if they're holy that doesn't mean they're gods even if they're pious doesn't mean that they control the creation so we don't turn to them we turn to the one whom they turn to if they're truly holy and pious then they also turn to God Therefore, if they turn to God, they become an example for us. We too turn to God. So the first part of the testimony is that I bear witness and I testify that there is no deity worthy of my worship other than Allah. All of my love and hope, all of my fear, all of my expect expectations will be singled out to this one God. And the second part of the testimony, Muhammad Rasulullah, means that I bear witness and testify that this particular human being, the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, the Arabian Prophet, I testify that this human being was sent by God to be an example for me. Not to be taken as worship, not to be ascribed divinity, but to become a role model for us. He is a human like we are. He was born a normal birth. He ate and drank like we eat and drink. He married, he had children, and then eventually he passed away. He was not a God, but he was the messenger of God. He came to teach us the message. He came to show us the way. He came to set an example. And that example is a human example that we have to emulate, we have to copy, we have to take as our role model. So by saying, I bear witness and testify that Muhammad وسلم, is the messenger of Allah, what you're saying is that no human being is a better example for me. No human being is a better role model for me as a father, as a leader, as a spiritual advisor, as a worshipper of God, as a husband, as a role model citizen, no human being is a better example than this human being. That is what you're saying. You are not making him into a God. You are making him into the best worshipper of God, the best servant of God. And so what this testimony symbolizes is that you need to study the messenger. You need to study his life and times. You need to study his actions and teachings. And when you study them, you then put them into practice in your daily life. These are the two fundamental testimonies of faith. Only God is to be worshipped, only Allah is to be worshipped, and He is worshipped based upon the methodology and the customs of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. This was the answer to your very beautiful question. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides you and me and all of us to the truth. I pray that He forgives us in this world and the next, and I pray that He showers us with His blessings and His mercy in this world and the one to come. And we'll see you next time. And until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.